I've been working with WordPress since 20, 2007, and I'm self-taught. So I'm the kind of person who didn't even know what a URL or an FTP was <laughs> when I first started out. And I um, experimented, and it's all still a bit surreal that I work for Automatic now, and I help other people with their stores. So never stop learning, that's all I'll say. Um, I started in support, so um, if you've ever filed a ticket with WooCommerce, I probably might have waited on you. But uh, today I, I lead the charge for all of our documentation, and it is, I love it, and I hope that it's been useful to you, and if not, you can tell me, <laughs> you can tell me about it afterwards, and I will take your feedback, and I will improve what we have. So the digital nomad part is, was experimental as well. I started out thinking that I would only do it for a year, um, and I've been doing it now for three and a half years. What that means to me is that I have no home base. I am homeless. Uh, everything that I own fits in this carry-on and one suitcase in the car right now. I move from driven by things like this that I do for the community where I speak. Um, and the reason I'm here is what Joe mentioned in the opening remarks. Joe uh, was sitting at a table by himself at WordCamp US, and I thought, oh, I'm going to go talk to him. And we had gotten a conversation. He was excited to learn that I work for WooCommerce. And he's like, oh, so you're going to bring us all the swag, and you're going to speak, and, and you're going to, and, and his, you know, this WordCamp hadn't even been announced yet. And I was like, Calm down there, Joe. Um, no, that, that doesn't mean I can do that. I don't work for events. I, I just work for you know, the WooCommerce team. Um, you're going to have to apply through all the normal channels and then do a call for speakers. And, and, he, and he's like, oh. And you know what I mean? I, and I felt sort of bad because it was like, oh, no. I've like crashed his dreams here. And then I submitted through, I, when I found out that I was going to, my team meetup is in Philadelphia um, next week. And I'm driving toward my meetup at this moment in, this, in my Mustang, which is really fun for, for me. And I thought, oh, well, you know what? It kind of corresponds to California, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop in. And um, I applied to speak just like everybody else. And within about five minutes, <laughs> Joe pinged me. He's like, is that really you? Or is that somebody pretending to be you? Because <laughs> you said you couldn't come. Um, and I told him it was really me. And I told him he should feel free to reject me if he <laughs> wants to take revenge on me or if the, the, the talk doesn't fit. Um, so, but he was, and so now here I am. And I also want to tell you why I'm, I'm speaking because I think it's really important to acknowledge this. I'm deathly afraid of speaking in front of other people, um, but I've been to tech conferences where it's been all men, and I wanted to see women and people of color represented, and so instead of complaining about it, I decided to get on stage myself, and so now here I am. Um, <laughs> And I'm hoping that other people will see me and they will dare themselves to get on stage too because it has been the most frightening but also life-changing um, thing that I've done in the last years. And I've met so, ama so many amazing people because of it. So please um, give it a try. If you ha I'm sure all of you in this room have something to share with other people. You just don't know it yet. So, um, so these are all the places that I've been since 2015, except for Japan. Japan is a trip that is upcoming in October. I will spend a month and a half there. So that just gives you a visual idea of where I've been. Um, and this is what most people, most people don't ask me how I am. They ask me where I am. So. I'm kind of used to that now. That's fine. You don't care about me? I see. Um, so let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. This is going to be a primer on WooCommerce. 
So if you already have a store, I'm going to show you other ways to make money with it. If you don't have a store yet, maybe you should maybe start one. Um, and we're going to briefly talk about payment gateways and security because those are two very important things. But there are other people on this very same track in this room who will talk to you about those things in general. I mean, in, d in depth. I'm just going to cover them briefly because I'm going to demo WooCommerce. I'm going to show you, if you don't have a store already, I'm going to show you that how, how easy it is to set up in a few minutes. I'm going to start with a blank WordPress site and add WooCommerce just like anyone in this room would. So why, why would you want to start a store? Um, there are a lot of reasons why. First, as you may have heard in the news, there's a lot of physical stores closing. It's not because they're out of business and it's not because they're not making sales. It's because no one wants to go to that store anymore, not even clothing stores. Uh, you would think that people would want to go to the clothing store and try on things. No. They buy online through their device, um, either their, their phone or their iPad. Um, or their laptop and they have everything sent to them. Um, the other thing that's uh, booming that someone else will talk about today is subscriptions. Um, sub sub subscriptions is a growing market where you buy a product, say your like shampoo or your favorite uh, hair oil or something like that, and you have it delivered to you on a monthly basis because that's how often you need it. And sometimes you can't find it in the store, so it's really convenient to just get it in the mail. The other thing that's a myth is that you need to be big like Amazon to be successful, and that is not true. Um, you can be, you can specialize in one thing or one vertical like a North Face does, like outdoor clothing, and you can be very successful. I was uh, searching for, I was, live, I was in Stockholm at the time, and the ground was frozen, and I was looking for spikes or chains that you can put on your feet, and I found yaks tracks, and that's all they do, is spikes and chains for your feet. Now, they don't only sell online, they, they're placed at REI and um, other outdoor places, but that is all they do, and they're very good at it. So, and then the other thing too is content is something that you can create to drive traffic to your store. Um, you have an identity, you have a voice, you, you can use it, you can display your personality online, and you can <coughs> attract people and sales to your store. All from your home, so. So like I said, today we're going to talk about these two things. How many people already have a WooCommerce store? Okay. And how many people maybe want to start one? Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> um, so before we get into that, I want to I just talk briefly about how to choose a payment method. You will get my slides, by the way, and all of the links. Um, so you don't have to remember all these things necessarily, take notes. But I want to I mention these two things briefly because getting paid and security are pretty, pretty basic things of your site that you need to have. Um, a lot of times when you choose a payment gateway, it, is, it, is, it depends on a lot of things. So all those things on the list. Um, and then it's up to you about what your business is. What do you intend volume to be? Who are your customers? Do you want to a free gateway or do you want to pay for a gateway? Um, what are the transaction fees that are associated with it? Um, is it scalable? So if you start small, maybe the transaction fees should be small and then as you get bigger, maybe they'll increase by like a percentage. How many ga gateways do you need on your store? I always recommend that you have at least two because if one fails, then someone can still check out. And then if you're going to sell um, subscriptions, then you want to make sure that you have support for recurring payments. Not all gateways have that. And then it, it also depends on what kind of business. If, you're, if, you, if you have a physical store, maybe that will be a factor when deciding. Security. 
the, the one thing that I, I want to impress upon you with security is, oh, wait a minute. I just want to mention, in this same room, um, John, who was standing here just a few minutes ago, he's going to talk about payment gateways in depth. Um, I believe that's after lunch he's doing it. And then, okay, so back to security. So security, SSL, you've probably heard of that before. Um, you need an SSL certificate. And it's even easier these days to get one because you don't even need to pay for one. You can get a free one with Let's Encrypt. And what that does in general is the security helps to protect the sensitive data that's being transmitted between your site and the, the site that is processing the payment so no one comes in and, and steals that information. And when people shop on your site, they want to know that you're protected so they are protected and they can trust you and they feel safe to buy from you. And that's the general idea of security. Like I said, I will include links and there's resources at the end and you can just look at my slides and look at all the different links and read for yourself. You don't need to remember all of this. But I wanted to mention these two things because they're important. Okay, so it's workshop time. Um, so we're going to go through and set up a store and I'm going to show you how it's done and you're going to if you want to do it now or you can you can also do it later um, but I'm going to do it live in front of you um, just to show you that it can be very user-friendly and then after that for people who already have a store I'm going to talk about subscriptions and I'm going to talk about bookings and these are two ways that you can add to, your, to an existing store just, and you don't have to necessarily change anything about your, about your existing store. It's just about offering more. So does, does anyone have any questions at this moment before we go on? Or are you gonna just like save them to all to the end? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to. Okay. Aim it towards yourself, though. Okay, so this is a... I'm, I'm loud, so I, I guess that works in my favor, I guess. Um, the bad thing is, is that it's not... Um, hold on. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm looking for. Um, maybe I need to go back and adjust these preferences again. If you're wondering what I'm doing, um, I'm accessing my password, man pass password manager. Um, and I need to do this because uh, at, at Automatic we have a lot of passwords. Um, and Okay, so this is a blank site. I'm just going to log in. This is a, 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 a WordPress site. So you can see it's, it's blank. It's not? OK. Let's go back. Thanks for telling me, because that would have been bad. Hold on. No. Nope. 
Is it there now? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's not ideal though, because I still can't see the whole thing, but. So anyway, it's a, I know, I was going to say, uh, how come I can't see the whole thing? The beauty of live demo. Yeah, looks about right. Yeah. Let's see what it looks in the looks like in the back end. Well, that's somewhat better now. Okay. At least that's not just icons. Um, yeah, because I, I don't expect you to know all the icons. Because actually, I I don't even work work that way. So. Okay. So this is a blank site. And we're going to set up WooCommerce now from the beginning. We are currently not using Gutenberg. Gutenberg is going to be uh, part of the next release, uh, 3.6, that is coming in a couple of weeks. Um, but as of this moment, we are, this is still the WordPress as we know it. So we're going to add, add new. I'm going to install it. <coughs> Activate. Okay. So um, the thing that was supposed to happen didn't. <laughs> oh. Because you're yeah, it's because uh, because doing a live demo was fun. Um, Okay, so normally what would happen, and I don't know, maybe it's detected that this site has been used before, maybe that's why it didn't come up, but what, what normally happens after you, you install is that the setup wizard uh, launches. Oh, I see. It, is, uh, it's, it remembers that I did this before. So this is why it's uh, showing Indonesia, because the last time I did it was in Jakarta. All right, so we're in the United States. Um, 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 we're just going to make up a, a place. Well, not totally make up, but I mean, it's based somewhat on, on truth. And it's going to prompt you for all the, the necessary details to set up your store. Um, there, there are a lot of currencies and, and there's, there's a lot of options here, but the mainly uh, the location will determine a lot of other things that will happen in your store. Um, and then if you, if you want to sell physical and digital products, even if you don't know which one, I mean, if you know that you're an all digital store, you can go ahead and, and, and select that. Um, but I, I think that most people might choose both just in case, uh, the, it changes over time. Um, And then what we were talking about earlier, payment gateways. There, there are a couple of different uh, payment gateways that come free with WooCommerce, and you can, um, you know, you can add others. You don't need to use these. You can also change your mind. You're not committed to 
making these decisions and then you're locked in, you can deactivate these payment gateways at, at any time. Um, or you can install other ones that you prefer or that you find that are, that are most suited for you. So let's just, um, I'm going to go ahead and take the, both of these. Um, and then offline payments, uh, some people um, go, I don't know if anyone takes checks anymore, but, um, but other people, if, especially if they deliver products like food or something like that, they might want to accept cash on delivery um, or if you're dealing with uh, other things uh, like big transfers, you might want to go ahead and allow bank transfers as well. So I'm going to continue. Um, shipping. Usually, um, again, I don't, I'm not really sure why, but it, it, it would normally show me different shipping uh, options. Uh, there, we have a lot of different options that you can choose from. Uh, the normal ones, such as like uh, FedEx or the US Post Office, um, other things like that. We also have um, a WooCommerce services that's offered through um, Jetpack, but not everybody wants to install Jetpack. So, um, and then you want to choose the weight and and um, and dimensions the the units for these. I'm going to continue. Um, most people when they think about marketing their products or keeping in touch with customers might want to use MailChimp um, in order to create like a, a newsletter. I'm not going to, I'm, and then automated taxes, something that's also offered through Jetpack. I'm going to untick this actually because, um, Okay, so the store, the basic store now is set up. So that only took a few minutes, um, ignoring the fact that I was talking. Um, and we had some issues at the beginning. But, and now you're, you're basically ready to start setting up your store. If you have an existing store that you want to port over to WooCommerce, you can put that on, an, on a CSV file in a certain format and then just import them all at the same time. Um, or if this is your first time creating a store, which for many of you it will be, you can just go right to creating a product if you want to go there. Or maybe you want to go to the dashboard and, and just explore and look around. That's totally fine too. We have um, documentation, which I've written, <laughs> that can help you. And in a couple of weeks with the, the launch, our, our, our videos will be back online. They're, they're, they haven't been online for the last year, but they're being updated at this moment. And can, uh, a lot of people like to have video because it helps them visually to walk through the steps. Not everybody loves written documentation. Um, everybody le learns differently. So those are going to be back available to everybody. So you can go to Getting Started, which is a doc, um, and this link, I believe, is not uh, is not viable at this moment. I believe it goes back to, to docs. It does. Okay. So you can go to the the docs to getting started and take a look at what you might want to do first, or you can just go to the dashboard and have a look around. Um, er, again, everybody learns differently. I, I like to go around and explore the dashboard and just see what's there. Everything should be blank because we just um, set it up. Most of your settings for WooCommerce will be under WooCommerce settings. And I believe there's a
there's a whole page with that. It walks you, it walks you through all of it. Some of these things you've already done already with the with the setup wizard that it, it, it goes ahead and, and puts you through some of these decisions already and so they were already going to be inserted for you. There shouldn't be any orders yet because it's brand new. Does anyone have any questions at this moment? Hmm? No? Can you show how to put a product in? Sure. So down here is uh, products. Add new. And you'll see if you've used WordPress before, the, uh, the, the screen looks very familiar, doesn't it? Uh huh. Um, we also have documentation on that as well, in case. Set up products. But if you just let's just go to the screen here and just take a look. Okay, so. The product name, let's just say we want to set up, I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, why not? Um, we don't have any categories set up yet, but we can set one up. And then this, this place that you would normally write like a post is the description. And then down here is all the product data. So if this is going to be a t like a t-shirt that comes in different sizes and different colors, it would not be a simple product. It would be a variable product. And that is a separate uh, page of documentation here. What do you consider a variable product? A variable product is something that has... Large, extra large. Yeah, exactly. Green, blue, yellow, um, small, medium, large. If it's just, a, if it's just like a... I don't know, like a, a sticker. You only have one. It would be a simple product. Is that the same for digital products too, or just physical goods? Um, I'm trying to think of what would be a variable digital product. It could be customized digital files that you build. Well, yeah, right. Um. I think normally when you set up files, they, if they're different, they should be j separate products. That way you can track how many you've sold of each a lot easier. Um, not only that, but I think that if you have something, even if it's a variation, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an example because this, is, this came to me when I was in Madrid and this, this woman, she had a store that she was building for a, a fashion designer who, who only designed bikinis. And so in her mind, they were all bikinis. Um, and so that was just a variable product. <laughs> And I was thinking, well, no, no um, because there's triangle tops and there's bandos and there's, and then there's different bottoms. But not only that, but because this was a visual product, um, I thought it would be better if she showed her her, her entire catalog. Um, so it was fine to like, you know, to make a product that was. Um, it was still a variable product, but it was only vari variations in size. They were not variations in colors or, 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 or you know, types of tops or anything like that. And so that way, when people looked at the, her, her catalog, they could see like all the beautiful designs that she had. Um, and so if, if, 
if I mean, if they were just files, if they were just digital files, I mean, I'm not really sure. I think it would depend on what kind of files they were. Um, you may want it to, it could be a variable product. Um, maybe you have different tiers or something, but if you have, if you wanted to show off to your customers how many different things that you had, it'd probably be better if you made them all different. Um, because if they have to dig for whether you have it or not, I think that's, that might lead to a lost sale. Um, and, you know, you don't want to lose somebody if you have it. Um, so let's just say... Um, Let's say you have, I don't know, 10. You have back orders? Um, no, because if you, if you only have 10 and you're not going to order anymore, then you don't want back orders. Um, low stock threshold. Do you want to be alerted when there's low stock? Well, if they're going to sell out then, and you're not going to reorder, then probably no. Um, And then this is where um, your product dimensions come in. Um, you need to enter a weight and also uh, dimensions because this will help calculate shipping. So I don't know how much a t-shirt would weigh, but I don't know, it's six ounces. Um, and I don't know if we need to put this in, but I'm just gonna put it in anyway. Length. Um, Did you put in the dimensions of the item or the shipping containers that you would put? The, the shipping, the shipping um, gateway will automatically calculate <coughs> what it is. Um, this is the reason why, like with a t shirt, because it can be folded up. I'm not really sure if this is. Um, but it, it, the, to answer your question, the, the shipping gateway will automatically calculate based on the weight and the dimensions of things what the best box or envelope might be. Um, and then it will return it. And then you, I, I believe that if there are different options, it, it, it does give the customer different options to choose from and what that will cost. We don't have any shipping classes set up at this moment. Um. Well, it needs to be refreshed. Yeah. I probably got to save it first. Yeah. Can't the attributes that you were doing, those are just things that are special about this product. The attributes, the attributes uh, contribute to the variations. This is, I, I guess, is the reason. Like, I, I usually don't like to get into variable products for the, f especially when we're doing it for the first time, um, because it it can be, it can become confusing at first. It's it's actually, I like to start with simple products first. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think a lot of women in this room can relate to that, right? Mm. So, um, 
So, okay, so let's go back to simple product. So, um, so the regular price would be, I don't know, 15. <laughs> sale price 12. You don't have to enter um, a sale price if you don't want to, but you do need to enter a price for the, the object if it, if it is uh, not free. So. Um, and then under advanced, um, you can add some notes or you can also um, enable reviews for the product. I'm not going to enable reviews because, well. And then um, these are the basic uh, things that we just went through. You're, you're almost ready to publish it. And what's missing is a, a product image. So product image is over here. Um, it, we're not going to sell coffee, so. Oops. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is wild live demo is hard. Um, so we're just going to, I'm, I'm just going to do this really quick because we're not, this is just an example, but you obviously want to take your own photos and um, Oh no. If you had a, an object or an item that you're selling that had different views, say front and back um, and sides, and you wanted to show it off like jewelry or um, something like that, um, you might want to create a gallery um, down here. And then it gives you the option to upload a lot of images and then the person, whoever is looking at the product can scroll through them. Um, I'm not gonna, let's see, tags, well, I might just put t-shirts, um, and black, and I think we're ready to publish the, the product. I don't see anything else that is basic that we haven't covered. This short description is optional. Um, it could help um, search if you wanted to put in uh, something there, but uh, y usually your, your product description up here is, is just fine. So let's publish. And now the shirt is there. Um, if you wanted to see a site that's a little bit more populated, well, I guess I can't now because I'd have to exit again. But I, I had a, I have a, a store that is my test site over here. Um, I'll, I'm, at some point, I'm going to have to log out and I can show you. The thing is, is I, I, because of the passport manager is hidden again, I would need to get out of it, out of this view again, like I did before, and then subject you all to, you know, that again. Um, not a big deal, but I'm just warning you. So, technically you're ready to, um, after you set up your, your shipping and your payment gateway, you're ready to sell. Um, let's go back here. Um, there aren't any payment gateway, uh, well there's a PayPal and, okay, so it, it's not set up at this moment because I would need to sign up for an account. Um, but the basics of, of starting to sell would be the payment gateway, your security, your products, and then your shipping. And the shipping tab is here. 
And we need to get rid of this one because it's not Indonesia. Can, can you talk about WooCommerce um, integrating with shipping services such as USPS and UPS? Um, sure. So, so we have a USPS shipping method here. Um, and you would need to purchase this and install it on your site. I can show you, um, I think I can download a download one and show you. And then also we should uh, move to questions because we need to wrap it up here. Oh, we do. Oh my gosh. Time goes so quick, doesn't it? Okay, so I didn't even get to show you anything with subscriptions or anything, but I, I hope that someone else is going to do a subscriptions talk today. It is, um, who is it? It's, um, is it Amit, I believe? He's going to show you how to build a subscription business, but what I wanted to, what I wanted to show you really quick if you, is if you had a If you already had a WooCommerce store, um, for those people who are in this room who already have a WooCommerce store, um, you can do things like uh, install subscriptions and then have people subscribe to that product on a monthly basis or weekly basis or, or whatever it is. And that can generate recurring sales for you. It's, it, they're already pre-authorized uh, through the payment gateway. So you wouldn't need to invoice them every month or every year. Or, um, it would just automatically take the money and then you would need to deliver their products on whatever interval they selected. Um, How did you make that happen? Sorry, which one? It's a plug-in. Um, I'd hope to... Yes, let me show you. I'll, I have the links and everything in my in my in, in the resources that I'll give you in my slides, but it is a it is a plugin that you would buy separately, and it is is managed by a really great team, um, Prospress, and you can add this to a product that you already sell and offer. Say like if you sold hair products or um, if you sold actually anything. Um, to be honest, um, let's see. What's the name of the plugin? It's called WooCommerce Subscriptions. It's not complicated. Um, it's it's um, it's so you can find it basically. <laughs> um, but so, for instance, this coffee place, they offer these uh, sold on on an individual basis, but they also offer them on a subscription basis too, so you would get a different uh, coffee every month. Um, for ins and the same with this mystery chocolate box. Um, you're, you don't know what you're buying, you know it's chocolate though. <laughs> and you can sign up for three, six, or 12 months and you get a different box of chocolate every month, which I think is really cool actually. All right, so let's uh, grab a few questions. Okay. And then we'll wrap it up. I have a good question about fulfillment. Like uh huh. I want you all fulfillment of the t-shirts in your garage. Mm -hmm. uh, is there some kind of company you can reach out to? Uh, you ha there's different options. Oh yeah, you, I'm sorry. We have to. So the question is, he want he was asking about fulfillment. If there's different companies that you can work with, you can actually work with Amazon fulfillment if you'd like, and they come and pick up your products, um, and then the, when people buy from you, they fulfill them for you. Um, but that is not the only option. There are other options out there as well that you can research. Um, but that is probably the most uh, popular one and recognizable as well. So it offers tracking and everything for everybody who buys from you. Um, you? I have a question. Okay. Uh, if we're already working with PayPal, mm -hmm. does that integrate with WooCommerce or do we need to set up another WooCommerce? I mean, a, 
another PayPal account. You can use your, the, the question is, uh, if you already have a PayPal account, do you need to start a new one if you want to do this for a store or do, can you use the existing one? And the answer is it depends. If you are okay with using your existing one and you, if it's a personal one, you want to convert it to a business account and then you can use it. It would be the same email attached. Or if you want to keep them separate, then you would sign up for a new one. Okay, and then the benefits such as the uh, USPS shipping, because you don't need to pay for that, it's already included in PayPal, would you have to get the, purchase the plug-in? If it's already included with the account that you're using, then no. All right, so I do, we're sort of a little uh, behind schedule. Sorry. So what we'll do, oh, no, 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 I apologize. You can put me in the hallway. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so. And you can talk to me all you want. I'll yeah, be here all day. At, at work camps, part of the magic is also the conversations in the hallway track. It's the hallway track, everybody. So once we're done here, you can talk to her offline, outside, mm -hmm. and get all your questions answered, and we'll get set up for the next session. Sorry, so I thought that was going to go faster. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I gotta go upstairs and do a presentation.